Unafraid Show, Reister or Wrong. George Reister here. Uh, great show up for you guys today. Thank you for joining me like you do all the time. Um, first and foremost, before we even uh, get started, let me tell you what we got going on today. A lot of people are asking, very important question. Why is the Black Panther movie so important? So we're going to talk about that today, first and foremost. Um, and then also we're going to talk about the Stoneman shooting, gun control, that whole deal. No, it's uncomfortable, but that's what we're going to talk about because that's what matters to us and what's going on right now. Because most of us are parents, either you're a parent, brother, sister, somebody you know is in school, whether it's high school, college, elementary school, preschool, daycare, whatever it is, somebody you know is in harm's way right now and we're going to talk about that but we also want to give credit to instead of giving credit to the shooter and giving him publicity entertainment all of that stuff like he wants we're going to give credit to the people who deserve it most aaron feiss chris hickson were among the 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 athletic director and the assistant football coach who were shot. So we're going to talk about that as well. You guys make sure you uh, swipe up, share the feed, continue the conversation. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about. First and foremost, we're going to get to the Black Panther movie. So people have lost their damn mind surrounding this Black Panther movie. Black people and white people and everybody in between. And the reason why I say that is because, so the movie's an important movie. And we're going to go over why it's such an important movie. But people have lost their damn minds. I've seen comments of white people talking about, don't go see the movie the first week. Allow black people to enjoy this for themselves. Man, it's a damn superhero movie. You go see the movie when you can see the movie. Like, if your kid want to see it on the first day, you want to see a Marvel movie on the first day, go see the movie. Don't not go see the movie so black people can see the movie. I mean, it's a damn movie. Like, let's like slow the hell down. Like, it's a superhero movie. Um, and yes, it is the most anticipated movie of the entire year. The most anticipated movie, maybe, of all time. Highest pre-sale tickets, all of that. I'm going to go see it today. But why is this important? Uh, so, so we're going to get to a comment that uh, a chick named, a lady, named Emily Waka, Waka Dewala said. She said, and she tweeted. So I carefully did not buy Black Panther tickets for opening weekend because I did not want to be the white person sucking black joy out of the theater. What's the appropriate date for me to buy tickets? Is next weekend okay? And I'm sitting here like, how unaware is this? First of all, it's a superhero movie. Yes, it's about a king in Africa and one of the first black superhero movies that we have actually seen. It's actually like a, a great movie. But like, let's come on and let's be serious about what this is. I mean, it's a Marvel movie, no different than the Avengers, no different than Iron Man, no different than any of these other movies. The only thing, the only significance that this movie has, particularly to black people, is this. And I know that there are a ton of black people who are going to dress up. They're going to go in uh, militant outfits and this and that. The movie's not about the Black Panther Party. The movie's about... The damn superhero T'Challa. Uh, he's the king. He's a king in Africa of Wakanda. Uh, bad guy tries to destroy the world and he's there to save the day. Same thing like Iron Man. Same thing like Superman. Same thing like Batman. But the reason why this is important to um, just culturally and just to black people in general is because let's think about the black superhero movies that we've had in the past. You got Blade, uh, Blade 1, 2, and 3. So you got Wesley Snipes Trilogy. Uh, you got Steel with Shaq, which sucked. You got Spawn, Hancock with Will Smith, which was just all right. You got Blank Man and Meteor Man, which are parodies. I mean, that's what you got in terms of black superheroes. Yes, Green Lantern, but that movie was like nothing at all. But this is like the first big budget, like real deal uh, thing. And black movies, if you guys don't know. So when it comes to black movies or movies with mainly black characters or where the, the star is, is black. 
studios have been hesitant to make so many of these movies because they said they didn't travel well. And travel well means international. Because truth be told, if you have a movie and it does not do well uh, internationally, you are not a movie star. You're just a you're just a, a household name in the United States. You're not a movie star. You're just a you know a famous person. And so this is the first one because when you look at this, like this movie, when you read the reviews and all of this, it has the potential to be one of the highest grossing movies of all time. So let me give you a short list. Highest grossest movies of all time. Avatar number one worldwide, 2.7 billion. Titanic number two, 2.1. Star Wars The Force Awakens, 2 billion. Uh, Jurassic Park, 1.6. Marvel's The Avengers, 1.5. Furious 7, which was surprising, 1.5. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, 1.4. 8, Harry Potter, The Deathly Shadows, 1.3. Star Wars The Last Jedi, 1.3. And Frozen, 1.2. So those are the biggest movies of all time. And when you get when you look at the movies that have topped the billion dollar mark, there are the Star Wars, the Iron Man's, the Dark Knight. Like so many of these are superhero movies. And to have a person of color, a black person in that uh, field is exciting. It's exciting to me because and I know that so many people are going to and I'm not going to be the guy that. That's the uh, white people. You just don't get it. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to explain it to you because I know that we've had a black president. I know that you can be anything that you want to be out in the world. Right. However, when you look at um, like when you are a black man, black woman, black girl or whatever, you know how if you're a woman in this situ situation, you don't necessarily have a whole bunch of like you. There's never been a woman president. So while you feel like you can tell your daughter she can be anything out in the world, you still would like to see representations of that out in the world the way she can feel better about herself and all that. Same thing with black people. Yes, you we've had a black president and Barack Obama. Yes, we've had all that. But at the same time, you like to see representations of yourself because it helps the way you feel about yourself, how your kids feel about yourself. And the fact that, you know, it's a positive role model. You need to see more positive images of people that look like you or do the same things that you do, whether they're from the same city, town, whatever it is. That's why the movie is important. And, but we need to slow down with all the like that. This is like culturally significant in terms of the Black Panther Party, first of all, or that this is culturally significant in terms of. Uh, and, and, or that, or that white people need to stay away from this or that or whatever. It's a superhero movie. Let's not make it out to, um, into like, 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 like this is not, um, I am not your Negro. Like it's, it's not that like, it's not, it's just an opportunity to see other, a superhero movie for people that look like you. That that's why it's important to black people. That's why it's important to black people, because you haven't really had that. You got Blank Man, Meteor Man, Steel with Shaq, Spawn, Blade, and Hancock. Like, really tell me how many of those movies that you remember, or how many of them that you even saw to begin with. You might have seen Blade, but that might be it. I mean, like, let's really be real. Uh, swipe up, share the feed, continue the conversation. You're listening to Unafraid Show, George Reister, your boy here. Um, the next thing that we got up today is um, I wanted to give some love. and Oh, and you guys, make sure you're sending your comments as well. Is I wanted to give some love to assistant football coach Aaron Feiss and athletic director Chris Hickson. They were among the people shot and killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida yesterday. And I wanted to give them so much credit and because... These are people who stood up, put their life on the line for other people, for these kids, for them to get out safely, to take care of them. Because in these situations, like we give so much credit, uh, like, well, not credit, but time, attention and dedication to the shooters, which is what they want, which is what they want. This is why they did it to begin with in the first place. So we give them so much credit, but I wanted to make sure that we give credit to 
the people who are who really put their life on the line and who are really who really show up in a special way in in absolutely uh, trying times like because this is huge. And then we want to talk a little bit about gun control as well, because I know that this is the subject. I know that people are excited about this. They are hot on the topic. Every time there's a shooting, uh, there are two things that we hear. Every time there's a shooting, there are two things that we hear. We hear gun control, gun control, gun control. Will anybody finally listen? So that's the first thing that we hear. The second thing that we hear is... um, we need to protect. Uh, we need to stop crazy people with guns. That's who we need to stop. So those are the two things that we hear when when anybody when there are any of these shootings at schools or any of that. Don't talk about gun control. It's too soon. It's too soon. To allow the parents to grieve. But the question is, there have been eighteen school shootings this year. How many do there have to be before we actually do something? And not just do something, but do the right thing. Because there's going to be people that, that call for, um, because now I've heard one of the most ridiculous ideas. I want to know what you guys think. Send in your comments as well. One of the most ridiculous ideas that I have heard, which is, oh, let's call the police on crazy people. People who, um, people who we think are, are uh, you know, if you're depressed, if you're bipolar, if you're this or that, let's call the police on you so they can pick you up in a paddy wagon. Like, what kind of sense does that make? So many people in this country battle depression. And yes, mental health is a big issue. I talk about this all the time. Mental health is a big issue. But the police can't just go round up people who have not committed crimes. Like, this isn't Minority Report. You can't stop crime before it happens. So people actually have to do something to be arrested. And so many times we hear about people who um, who do something. I mean, uh, we hear about their family saying, well, we had no idea this and that. And I would say that as a parent, I am actually concerned at this point in time about my kid going to school. Been 18 school shootings, uh, 18 school shootings, I think, in the last calendar year. 18. So, yes, I am a little bit terrified of my kid going to school. And, yes, we need to have a contingency plan. Am I thinking about buying my kid a uh, a bulletproof backpack? Yep. Hell yeah. Damn, damn right I am. Because you want to protect them. So the question is, how do we actually protect them and do the right thing? Not just do something. Because people want to say, oh, let's round up all the crazy people. This is a mental health issue. This is that. This is that. But how about this? I would say that there's not a whole lot of mental middle ground in this issue. It's either all guns or no guns. Like it's not really a ton of middle ground because I think we can all agree that if you have been convicted of domestic violence, if you have violent history or this or that, you shouldn't own a gun like There should be a central registry for that, for guns. Because I'll tell you this, I had two guns stolen in the state of Florida. Two guns. What do I do trying to be a responsible human being? I call and I say, you know what? My guns were stolen. I need to report them. Oh, you know what Florida tells me? Oh, there's nowhere to report your gun. What? So if I have two guns stolen out of my house, then... There's nobody to report it to. What kind of sense does that make? I mean, it, it, it's absolutely insane. No, 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 no. The police will take a, a report, but they don't. But there's no central registry for the guns. So it, it, it's just absolutely asinine. It's just absolutely asinine. Like. And the reason why I didn't know the guns were stolen at first, because they were in a storage unit. My storage unit was broken into and stolen. So it was years before I found out that they were that they were gone because I moved back from Florida, back to California, all that. So um, and I mean, do you guys subscribe to the theory that a good guy with a gun would stop mass shootings? Because I don't. I don't subscribe to that theory. 
But I also don't subscribe to the theory that taking all people's guns away would actually stop crime either. So, so the question is this. So how do you do something that is actually like meaningful that will keep our children safe? Because one of the things that you don't like, right? Because I live in a nice neighborhood. Some of you guys live in nice neighborhoods. Some of you don't. And I've lived in uh, not, not nice neighborhoods, gone to schools that weren't so nice. And one of the things that you see in poor neighborhoods, particularly in California and some other places is they have metal detectors for schools. Now, if you live in a nice affluent neighborhood, you don't want to have your kid walking through metal detectors feeling like, you know, like this is a jail they're going in and out of. So I understand why people don't want to feel like that. So how do you then reconcile the happy medium between there? I don't want my kid going to a school that looks like a prison, but also I want people with guns around and all this. It doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. So you either have to choose all or none where owning a gun becomes a crime or everybody can have guns. I mean, like it, it's got to be somewhere. In bet- I mean, there's not so much in between, because if you start trying to judge people's worthiness to have guns based upon their social media, you're going down a slippery slope. You're going down a really, really slippery slope. I mean, well, uh, okay. Somebody just said, uh, I'm glad that there are metal detectors at airports. I don't feel like the plane is a prison. I'm glad there are metal detectors at airports too, but there's also been shootings at airports and the TSA is not exactly foolproof. I traveled with a knife in my bag on accident recently. So like, I mean, like a, like a, a blade about that long. So we're not going to act like the, the people don't have weapons in the, in the airport either. But, the, but, but the question is, is how do we do something different and rounding up people because of their social media makes absolutely no sense to me. Makes no sense because you're going down a slippery slope. Because if you round up people based upon their social media, it becomes an opportunity to weaponize to to uh, weaponize these things. Because all you have to do is say, "Oh well, this person, that person, they posted this or that." And the question is, how how much is too much? Because you may not hear, because you may not be posting a picture with a gun, but if I think that you are doing something crazy or reckless, now I'm going to report you? I mean, how does that work? I mean, how does that work? And I've said this so many times and people won't, uh, and people have been reluctant to listen, but I hope you guys listen now and really think about this, is that At the point in time where we get trying to limit somebody else's rights and abilities out in the world, guess what? Your rights and your things are up next because I'll take it all the way back to prayer in schools. So we've taken prayer out of schools because we didn't want kids to feel some kind of way about other kids praying in school. Kids can't bring their Bibles to school, have meetings and all this stuff. Mind you, not forced, but just taking prayer out of schools, out of public schools. But then when all these tragedies happen, what do, what do they say to us? Oh, hey, can you guys pray for Paris? Can you pray for Las Vegas? Can you pray for Florida right now? Oh, but you, but, but you didn't want anybody to pray in schools at first, right? You didn't want anybody praying in schools, but, but now we should pray. But now you want us to pray. I mean, I mean that's the, that, that's the thing. I, and the other thing is that, um, okay, so somebody sent in a comment. Oh, well, actually, I'll fin- finish th- this part first, then I'll go into that. So you want us to pray. And then the other thing is, let's take it to the NFL. So players can't kneel for the anthem and use the rights that this country was founded upon. You don't want them to do that. But then you want your rights protected, your 2A, 2B rights. Your rights to own guns. All of this stuff. I won't support a woman's right to choose in terms of abortion. Regardless of whether you feel it's right or wrong. I won't support a woman's right to choose. But I want the right to refuse service to whoever I want because of my religious beliefs. Whether I own a store or business or any of that. 
So we get to tricky, tricky territory when we start trying to restrict other people's rights and other people's beliefs, but then we want our beliefs and rights protected because there becomes a line. I mean, so I get it on both sides because it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you believe a certain thing and you see the world, you feel like the world's going crazy. I get it. But at the point in time where you try to restrict other people's rights, Guess what? Your rights and all the stuff that you believe is coming into question later on. You don't want players to kneel? Guess what? People are coming after your guns. I've said if you support, if you don't want players kneeling, you should be, I mean, sorry. If you want your 2A, 2B rights, you should support players kneeling because they're coming after you soon too, buddy. You have to, you have to protect people's rights just in general. I mean, that's just a normal thing. Uh, Michael Stark said, um, ban assault rifles and high capacity clips. Okay. I'm in on the high capacity clip thing, but I'm a person who likes to shoot, shoot guns. I, I've shot AR 15s. I've shot guns when I've gone overseas to go, uh, to military bases, all of that. So I agree that people should be able to own guns, but my, but I look at it like this. What is the best? We have to adjust laws. We have to adjust things. As times grow and times change. So at the time the amendments were written, the constitution, all of that stuff, there were revolutions, all of this, and people needed guns. I mean, like people in everyday life, you could need a gun, like for real. Nowadays, it doesn't quite work like that. So I would not be, so to protect the interests of the public, I would not be, I would be open to considering that. Because at the point in time, if somebody could only carry a handgun, even if they got it legally, even if you got it legally, then there's only so many people that can be killed at one time. You won't be able to, I mean, it, it's just it's just a numbers game, literally a numbers game. There's a reason w why people aren't like, you can't walk into a gun store and buy grenades, grenade launchers, and uh, flamethrowers. There's a reason. And you used to be able to. Because it's not in the best interest of everybody in general. Because you can't control who gets their hands on the weapons. Because a lot of times. These, uh, because it used to be. They used to try to sell us on this. Well, well, bad guys have guns. Right? Okay. Which is true. And they do not get them illegally. However, the people who are shooting up the schools. Got their weapons legally the majority of the time. Got them legally. So like, let's not try to act like this is like that. This is a illegal weapon issue. This is a legal weapon issue. And so we have to try to find a way to do the right thing instead of just doing something. And that's something that people keep talking about right now. Oh, let's let's uh, let let's call the police. On people who are who we think are mentally unstable based upon their social media and we'll pick them up. What the hell are the police going to do? Like, let's really be real. What are the police going to do in these situations? They're going to go talk to the person. Person's going to say, hey, yo, I'm fine. I'm good. Or they'll stop posting these things on social media if they know they can get picked up. This is the truth. I mean, I, I'm. I mean, I believe in people's right to, to choose. I believe in all of these things. But we have to find some sensible resolution to this gun issue because, because I don't as because we all live in the safety and the bubble of our like everyday lives. And these tragedies don't really hit home until it hits in our neighborhood, till it hits in our state, till it hits in our county, till it hits our family, friends, or something like that. I understand that. But until it knocks at your front door, people don't really realize that it can happen at your front door. I have four kids at school right now. I have four kids at four different schools right now. That's four different opportunities. So am I considering, uh, but well, may maybe these kids should be homeschooled. Possibly. But we have to find some way to protect these kids and I just don't see the answer as giving more people guns. 
Because the more people that have guns, guess what? The more crazy people that can have guns. I mean, it, it, I, I understand it's a catch-22 and it sucks because I'm a person who likes guns, enjoys guns, and I use them legally, use them recreationally, and, and am not using them to commit crimes or hurt anybody. So I'm, so I'm at the same time that person. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person who believes in gun ownership and thinks that it's everybody's right. But then I'm at the, in the same breath. I'm like, damn, like, what are we supposed to do about these kids? How are we supposed to protect ourselves in a day and age when. When shooters want the attention, they want the attention on Facebook, Twitter, and there's no way to stop it because people want to know the news. They want to know what's happening. They want to know where they can go where their kids are, where to pick them up, like the spread of information, the good information. So, and we don't, and we give too much credit to uh, the shooters instead of the guys like Aaron Fries, Chris Hickson, who were the athletic director and the uh, football coach who got shot there protecting the kids. Those are the people that we have to honor in the situation. So, so this gun, this gun control issue like this is something that's got to be dealt with. This has got to be dealt with. And, and in a way that actually has some meaningful change, because just trying to attack it from a, from a, um, mental health issue, is just not enough because you don't know who's mentally unhealthy the majority of the time who's mentally unhealthy enough to commit a heinous crime like this until it's too late, until it's done. So you're going to keep having the same like cycle over and over and over and over again until something is done meaningful to do something different. To actually either secure the schools, which which may turn the schools into a prison, but then here's the, but then here's the question. So you have a security guard police officer at the school or something and he's the guy who goes crazy then what then, then they're the only people there with, with guns like you're, you're running into the same situation no matter what it is so it's not and i do subscribe that that guns don't kill people bad people with guns kill people however you you have to find a way to protect our kids protect our schools protect all of this stuff and good good guys with with a gun don't stop bad guys with the gun from doing bad things. I mean, like, this is just the truth. Uh, this Unafraid show today, I know it's different than what we usually do. We're normally a lot more on sports, but I appreciate you guys joining me, uh, coming with it today. And uh, we talked about why is the Black Panther movie such a big deal to black people and how people are losing their damn mind over it. Go see the movie. Enjoy the movie. If you missed why... Uh, start the feed over again uh, or download the podcast on iTunes uh, at, I'm sorry, hashtag unafraid show. Thank you guys for joining me. Catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.